friends! Welcome to Sunday Night Online. I'm Miss Elise and I am so happy to see you all tonight. I cannot wait to share with our preschoolers about the best surprise ever in the history of everything. And then after I share, we're going to have a super, super cool game for everyone to play before Pastor Joe comes on with his lesson for our school-aged friends. It is going to be so awesome. He starts a new series tonight. It's called Christmas Science, and we'll all have, it, it, it's got some wacky, wacky experiments that he's going to share, and I'm kind of wondering what he's going to do tonight, if he's going to make something invisible, is he going to turn something blue? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I know for sure I'm going to watch and find out. You may have noticed that we're kind of not filming in the regular spot that we film in usually, but um, that's okay. We're going to roll with our changes, and I, I mean, we're filming from my house, so how cool is that? You get to see a little bit of my life. Anyway, I'm really excited. I also have a new series tonight. It's called Jesus' Birthday, and tonight we're going to talk about surprises. But first, because it's a new series, we have a brand new verse to share with you. It's Luke Chapter 2, verse 11a, and it goes like this. You ready? <clears throat> Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Did you get all that? Yes? No? Maybe? A little bit. Let's do it one more time, just to be sure. Ready? Three, two, one. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Awesome! Great job, everybody! Kiss your brains, because you're so smart! Good job! Are you ready to hear about the best surprise ever, ever in the history of everything? Yeah? Yeah? Okay! All right, let's calm down, let's turn on our listening ears, and let's find out what our story for tonight is. So, tonight's story is from the Bible. Remember, the Bible is God's Word to us. So we know that everything that it says is true. And our story tonight comes from the New Testament in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 22, 26, excuse me, 26 through 38. I've already marked my Bible, see? Can you guys tell me what big holiday is coming up very soon? It's a very important holiday. It's very important to people from all over the world. And do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's Christmas. Christmas is coming up. And you know, we all do a lot of things to get ready for Christmas, don't we? You know, we decorate our houses, we put up Christmas lights outside, we put up a tree, we hang ornaments, and we bake cookies, and we wrap presents. And we watch Christmas movies, and we visit family, and we sing songs, and we do lots and lots and lots and lots of fun things. <clears throat> but do you know what the real reason that we do any of this is? It's because Christmas is when we celebrate Jesus' birthday. Did you know that? So we're going to talk about Christmas for the next few weeks, and we're going to learn about what happened when Jesus was born and why he is so very, very special. Have you ever been surprised by something? Sometimes surprises are great. Sometimes they're not so great. And sometimes surprises are wonderful. And once, a long time ago, the best surprise ever happened. The Bible tells us about Mary and the wonderful, wonderful surprise that she got. She was surprised one day when an angel appeared out of nowhere. Can you believe that? Wow! Can you imagine if an angel just suddenly appeared behind me? Or right in front of you? Oh my gosh, what a surprise that would be. I probably would scream. I would be so surprised. And anybody that knows me who's ever snuck up on me would know that I scream when you surprise me. <laughs> but let's see what the Bible says, what happened. Okay, so in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, we're going to read. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, 
a village in Galilee to a girl named Mary. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Yes, the King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. She was, Mary was really, really confused and disturbed and quite honestly, she was probably pretty surprised because an angel just suddenly appeared out of nowhere in front of her. And Mary tried to understand what the angel meant by that. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You are going to have a baby, a boy, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never, ever, never end. Mary asked the angel, mm, but how can this happen? I'm just a girl without a husband. So in verse 35, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby will be born holy, and he will be, call be called the Son of God. What's more, your cousin Elizabeth is also pregnant in her old age. People used to say that she would never, ever have a baby, but now she's in her sixth month because nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Wow, guys, what a lot of surprises for Mary. Her whole life, her whole life changed with that one big surprise. And, you know, she got a lot of surprises that day, didn't she? But you know what? Even though she did not understand everything that the angel had said to her, she trusted God completely. And she accepted all of those surprises with joy and with wonder. And guess what? God didn't just give Mary the surprise of baby Jesus. God gave Jesus to us also. That's pretty exciting. Jesus would grow up and become the Savior and the King to all of us. What a wonderful surprise. It is the best surprise in the history of everything. Everything. So that, my friends, is why we celebrate Christmas. It's when we celebrate the wonderful surprise of the birth of Jesus. At the very center of all of our celebrations and activities is Jesus. Christmas time is about Jesus. Whew, that is a lot of listening, you guys. It was You did so good. Kiss your brains again for working so hard at listening. Now, let's take a minute, real quick, and we're going to pray together, okay, my friends? Twinkle fingers, clap and fold. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus, our Savior and our King. In his name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job, you guys. Wow, you know what? The birth of Jesus is really, really an amazing surprise, isn't it? I cannot wait for next week when we get to learn more about him, our really special birthday boy. Right now, though, we're going to have a really, really fun game to play. It's called Christmas Close-Up. So it's going to have you type answers in, type them in. Uh, once you think you know them, it'll give you instructions. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. I got to watch it. It's so much fun, and it's really cool. And then after the game, Pastor Joe has a really fun experiment and a lesson to share with our school-age friends. I'm going to watch to see if anything crazy happens in his experiment. And I will see you all next week. I love you, and I am always praying for you. Bye, guys. Merry Christmas, everyone. Today we're going to take a really close look at some items you see a lot at Christmas time. I'll show you a close-up image of something related to Christmas. As soon as you think you know what it is, shout out your answer. Are you ready? Let's go! Hmm, what do you think this first image is?
time's up. What is it? If you said Christmas tree, you're right. Nice job. Here's the next one. What do you think this might be? Time's up. What is it? If you said Christmas stocking, you're right. Let's try another. I wonder what this could be. Time's up. What is it? If you said a nativity scene, you're correct. Now what do you think this might be? Time's up. What is it? If you said nutcracker, you got it right. Well done. Study this next one carefully. Shout it out if you know it. Time's up. What is it? If you said candy cane, you're right. Sweet job on that one. What do you think we're looking at here? Time's up. What is it? If you said a Christmas present, then you're correct. Way to wrap that one up. I wonder what this could be. Time's up. What is it? If you said a Christmas ornament, you're right. Nice job. What do you think we're looking at here? Time's up. What is it? If you said a bell, you're correct. Oh, what fun it is to be right. All right, this is our last one. Can you figure out what this is? Time's up. What is it? If you said an angel, you're right. Great job. Well, that sure was a lot of fun. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks for playing. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Joe Vivian, and tonight we begin our new study, and I'm excited about it, Christmas Science, you guys. Christmas Science. Are you excited? I am. It's going to be pretty cool, you guys. Well, I will take time in the next four weeks to perform a simple science experiment at the end of each lesson that will remind all of us of a specific moment in the Christmas story. Tonight's study is titled Special Message. We will be in the Gospel of Luke tonight, and our hope is that each of you will know what the birth of Jesus means to us. But before we get started, you guys, before we get started, let's learn the key verse for this new study, okay? Key verse, it is Matthew 2.10. So if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles out, you guys. Get them open. Go to Matthew. Remember, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. It's the first of the Gospels. Okay? And then you have Mark and then Luke. And so Matthew 2.10 is going to be our, our key verse for this study. And we're going to be in the book of Luke. So we're going to be in the first book of the New Testament. And we're going to be in the third book of the New Testament. Great. So let's put it up. Here's Matthew 2.10, you guys. You guys ready? It says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Matthew 2.10. Okay, did you guys catch that? Let's look at it one more time and see how we can begin to apply this into our lives, okay? Matthew 2.10, it says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Matthew 2.10. When they saw the star. I, I, wanna, I wanna focus in right at the very beginning of that, when they saw the star. Now, we're, we're talking about this picture of, of announcing the birth of Jesus, this message of Jesus being born. The application I want us to take away, you guys, are you looking for Jesus in your life? 
Are you pointing yourself towards him? And when you do, and when you see him, and when you experience him, are you filled with joy? I just, that's all I want us to sort of work on and think about this week, okay? How are you turning yourself, turning your body, turning your entire life towards Jesus? And is it filled with joy? So let's just keep that in mind, you guys. That's, that's what I want you guys to think about right now. So tonight's lesson, you guys, as I said before, is called Special Message, okay? So our focus is that each of you, each of you, will know that God sent Jesus to be our Savior. Right now, again, I need you to open up your Bibles to now Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. So as we talked about, I talked about Matthew being the first book in the Bible. Remember my, my trick? Go halfway and then go halfway again, and usually you're in one of the Gospels, and right now I'm in Mark. So remember I said Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. So I'm going to keep going over, keep going over. Here's Luke, and we're going to be in chapter 1. You guys see that on the screen? Chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Okay? So hopefully you guys are there or working and getting started on getting over there. Okay? So again, I'm going to mark it with my marker. I'm going to set that down right there. So hopefully you guys are ready to go, and you guys are at... Luke chapter 1. So let's get started on tonight's study. Awesome. Here we go, you guys. You guys ready? Now, think about what I'm going to talk about tonight. It's called Christmas science, right? So science has been used for many purposes over the years. Science has taught us how our body works, allowing doctors to treat us and help us stay healthy. Science has taught us how to build machines that can help us work and travel faster. Science has taught us about everything from the tiniest one-celled organisms to the vastness of space. Its uses are endless, and so are the lessons we learn. One very unique way people have applied science is to the way they communicate, the way we all communicate. Science enabled us to use radio waves to communicate through the air over long distances. You guys know that? Those radio waves. Science gave us radio, TV, Wi-Fi, and even satellite communications. Science enables us to broadcast the Super Bowl around the world to billions of people, including our troops overseas, in high-definition video and in real time. Science has also allowed us to send secret messages. We will see at the end of our lesson how we can use science to write invisible messages that can only be read with a heat source. Science enables broadcasters like our local radio stations to play Christmas carols non-stop for the whole month of December. It enables many churches and ministries like HBC Kids to broadcast the good news of Christmas on TV and the internet. What you're watching now. But as we begin our Christmas science series, we're going to see that God sent a very important message with no science at all. He sent a messenger to tell a young woman face to face the most amazing news she would ever hear. So right now, I'm going to share with you that message. So again, Luke chapter 1, let's start in verse 26 together. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Okay, verse 34. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and who will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Pretty great story. What a great special message, huh? What an important message. Well, think of it this way, you guys. For many centuries, God had communicated with his people through men called prophets, telling them that he was going to send a savior. 
The people of Israel believed that God would send them a conquering king who could free them from captivity of the Romans and establish a new kingdom on earth that would never end. Well, imagine, imagine what's going on now in Mary's surprise when the angel arrived and told her that the Savior was not going to be this conquering king, but her very own firstborn son. Jesus is a king, you guys, but he wasn't the king the people expected. He is the king of kings who sits at the right hand of God in heaven. He left his throne to come to earth, not to conquer Rome, but the thing that had us all enslaved. You know what that was? That was our sin. God came to conquer. He sent Jesus down there to conquer our sin. Jesus isn't the Savior we expected, but he is the one we needed the most. Today's story is about a message, but Christmas itself is a message. The birth of Jesus is a message we can all decode. God loves us, and he sent a Savior to save us. Okay, so I'll admit, this wasn't as simple a message as I had said it was. Yes, this was a message delivered in person to Mary, but it didn't come from another person. It came from an angel. Well, maybe he had wings, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Either way, either way, this was a heavenly messenger sent to earth to deliver a message that would change the whole world. Everything about this story and the events that followed tells just how important God's message was. God sent an angel to tell Mary that Jesus was coming. He put a bright shining star in the sky on the night Jesus was born that led three wise men, who also happened to be scientists, to see the young child Jesus. He sent a choir of angels to announce the birth to a group of lowly shepherds. God wants to get our attention just as he did Mary, kids. He wants to cut through all the busyness of life and let us know that he loves us. He wants to draw our attention away from Christmas trees, Christmas lights, and Christmas sales so that we don't miss the gift he sent us on that very first Christmas. This is no secret message. This is no members only message that can only be the chosen. That, that it's not anything set apart. God sent a message loud and clear. Love has come to earth in the form of a baby. God sent a Savior to die for our sins. Christmas is a special time to enjoy with friends and loved ones. And I hope this one is a merry one for all of you. But please, kids, let's not forget the incredible message of the angel. God is sending a Savior, and he will save the whole world. Would you guys pray with me? Pray with me tonight. Heavenly Father, Father God, I thank you for this wonderful message. The message that Jesus is coming. You sent your son down to save us from our sins, our selfishness. Lord God, there may be some right now listening to this message that have not turned their life over to your son, Jesus Christ. They're thinking, no, you know what? It's, it's not for me. He, he couldn't definitely have done this for me. I've done too many things. Or maybe I just, they're thinking, I don't need him. Lord God, if, if those are those individuals, speak to them right now. Let them hear the special message of how much you loved us that you sent your son to die for each and every one of us. Lord God, let us turn our lives over to you. Surrender our lives. Make your son the boss of our lives every day. Not just once, but every day choose to follow you through Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, we lift up this time to you. We thank you for your son and for this message that Gabriel sent. Let us always rejoice and have joy. We pray these things in your son's beautiful name. Amen. Amen, you guys. Hey, great study. Thanks, kids, for joining us. So let's now do this science experiment. You guys ready? Let's do the science experiment. Okay? So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to bring over my table that I've got over here. Now... This is what you'll need, okay? This is what you guys are gonna need. You're gonna need some lemon juice, okay? Fresh or bottled, I got bottled because it's cheap, okay? Uh, some kind of cotton swabs or like Q-tips, okay? A piece of paper, okay? Just any kind of piece of paper. And then a heat source. And what I mean by heat source, you can either have a bulb, an incandescent bulb, maybe a hair dryer, but you're gonna need something or even, I'm gonna use a lighter. now. Got to do this, this whole disclosure right off the bat, you guys. Parental supervision on this entire experiment. Parental supervision, okay? Understand? Okay, so we went over everything. Lemon juice. 
paper, some kind of cotton swab, a cotton ball to write the message, and a heat source. Okay. Now, I have a secret message to reveal on the paper. Okay. This is the paper that I worked on earlier. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's see if I can get it revealed. Okay. I'm going to hold it over the heat source and let's see if it'll start changing. Well, maybe, maybe, or am I going to catch something on fire? It's also started the paper on fire. Okay. So it didn't work. Okay. It didn't work with the heat. So I'm going to try another heat source and, um, okay. I'm gonna put this on hot. See, this is a hairdryer. Put it on hot. I don't know. Cause I don't use these things. So we're going to find out. I'll tone down the, the volume because it's going to get loud. Jesus is coming. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is. It's J-E-S-U-S-I-S-C-O-M-I-N-G. That's the secret message. Okay. I'll put the link down below so you guys can do this at home. Let me know how your results are. What kind of messages are you going to write? Okay. Now, I want you guys to understand something. God made no secret that he was sending someone special into the world. He knew that we were lost in sin and he knew we needed a savior. God sent his prophets to tell the people of Israel that a savior was coming, you guys. Then he sent an angel to let Mary know she was the one who would give birth to the Messiah. Isn't that great? Christmas is about the good news that a savior has come. Christmas is about how God sent Jesus to be our savior. This Christmas, let's do more than hang up lights and ornaments. Let's let people know that the reason for all those decorations, God has sent a message. A savior has come. Okay. I hope you guys like that experiment. That's really cool. Good luck as you guys do it. Have fun doing it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let me know how that works out for you guys. I'll have a link to a page that will walk you through this entire experiment so you can do this at home and write secret messages. So a reminder, you guys, on Sunday, December 13th, we will continue our study Christmas Science. Next Sunday's lesson, next Sunday's lesson will remain in the Gospel of Luke and it's titled Connect with the Prince of Peace. We will learn that peace comes from staying connected to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Again, that's next Sunday at 5.30 p.m., the 13th of December. Remember, kids, HBC Kids is here to encourage each of you and your parents to know Jesus, live like Jesus, and make Jesus known. Don't ever forget that you are loved and being prayed for. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Kids, have a blessed and wonderful week as you celebrate Jesus. Have a great one. Bye.